Hi, it's uh, Warren from Otter Valley. And I'm here too. It's Peter. The Diesel Doctor. This is another episode of What's New This Month at Otter Valley Railroad. And let's start off. I want to push this gorgeous Atlas Pullman uh, passenger car. Um, it would go perfectly with some of the uh, dual service GP7s and GP9s that are currently in production and that we sell here at Otter Valley, like the THB uh, GP9s. Hint, hint, hint. And uh, I've, I have one of these myself, and I just absolutely, actually, I have two, and I just love them. Beautiful cars. Uh, World War II era, post war era, and you might have even seen something like this in Toronto Union way back when. Yeah, Atlas, they did a run on these, so they did the standard Pullman in the NYC Grey, Peter. Yeah. They also did the Canadian National here. Mm hmm And they also did the CP... Uh, CP Coach, wasn't CP it? Coach, I but that one. was the maintenance away version. Yeah. So we have those available on our website. Yeah. So do definitely check those out. What else do you really like this month, Peter? I know you kind well, of pulled a couple items on Yeah, me. I am just so excited about the Rapido piggyback flat cars. And they are transition era, so they would work well 1960s to 1970s. Uh, and these are with open journals, and you can see the um, roller bearing uh, wheel ends inside the old journal boxes. And they're all set up for your 40-foot uh, trailers. Uh, and I just I think this is the kind of thing that would look great behind a couple of GP9s. Yeah, uh, Rapido has a run of uh, trailers coming up, Peter, in the uh, Fahrenhof. Oh, yeah. Um, that'll go nice with the, uh, yeah. the flat cars. So they did those in the uh, the brown TTX, mm -hmm. the yellow TTX, as well as several of the uh, PRR versions. So yeah. definitely check those out on our website. I will be going home today with at least one. <laughs> He's at least getting six more trailers, too. Remember that. Oh, already. that's great. Yeah. Um, on a lighter note, actually a more colorful note... Look at all this color, Peter. I love now, color. Clearly, we have to start with pink because, as everybody knows, my princess, Isabel, is a pink pink goddess. Pink freak. So she loves her pink. So we have added last month a whole selection of Tamiya cans. We've also added Tamiya enamels. And next month, we're going to be adding Tamiya water-based paints. Now, you're going to say to yourself, well, what about clear coat and dull coat? And we have those. And the testers cans as well. So they're available on our website and we ship them. Now, I always like a good magic show. What do you think, Peter? Well, I do like a magic show. Yes. So, a new supplier last month is called Deluxe Materials. This one is called Liquid Gravity, which adds weight. And the other one we have is oh. Ballast Magic. Oh, I like the, that's even better. So, again, wow. Um, it's always a magic show here at Otter Valley. You just never know what pops out on an import and it goes in your shopping cart. Hint, hint. <laughs> um, but there was one thing that uh, has really caught on with customers. What's that in your hand, Peter? That is the low acid soldering paste. Now, I want to tell you, if you are working on your locomotives or on any electronics, do not use plumber's soldering paste. It's far too acidic. You've got to use something that's low acid. And this is... I, I have this, and several of my friends have this container of the low acid flux. It's neat, it's clean, it's really easy to use, and uh, has a low melting point. It's just wonderful. So I recommend that highly. Can we talk about our wonderful trucks? Let's do that. Yeah, so they are amazing. We had an awesome load of trucks come in last month from Trucks and Stuff. So we have the trucks and stuff, uh, Fumanic uh, unloaders, ideally for a dry or cement service. Yeah. Cement is the predominant one. So yeah. owner operator, another owner operator, another owner operator, uh, the red zone, owner operator, owner operator. And then over here we have, uh, um, oh gosh, uh, Gilbert Bulk Feeds. And then it looks like an owner operator, the yellow yellow cab truck. Um, they were they were also in Laidlaw too, Peter. Yes. Laidlaw is yeah. the predominant one in, in southern Ontario yeah. for those trucks. So uh, definitely check those out. Yeah. Um, again, that's that's one of the new trucks from Trucks and oh, Stuff yeah. this month. 
We also have the dry trailers from uh, Mayflower. Right uh, we also had the Atlas moving ones, which have That's sold right. pretty quick. Um, again, the trucks and stuff, they're all available on our website. Um, check them out. Um, I got a confession for you, Peter. What's that? Last night, I took home a double crossover. Oh, and wow. I really tried to beg myself to install it. Uh -huh. And here we are, the Code 83 Walder double crossover. And it is beautiful. And uh, most of the wiring is already done for you. So you're probably going to say, why did you not install it, Lauren? Why didn't you install that, Lauren? Good question, Peter. Well, unfortunately, uh, I model well into Buffalo in 2004 to present day. However, um, the area that I model, they actually ripped the crossover out in the 90s. Well. So the crossover doesn't exist on my track, but mm -hmm. it's a beautiful piece. Oh, this, yes. this piece alone has been the hottest track piece we've sold in the last yeah. two weeks. And I'll tell you why. There is no more available at Walters. The likelihood of a rerun is low. And we had took everything they had last month in their warehouse. So again, um, you're thinking about a double track crossover. This is Code 83. Uh, it's Walters, Shinohara, and they're available on our website. And we have less than 10 left. Yeah, they are beautiful. Really it's a beautiful nice. switch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially if you're running mainline freight, mainline passenger. Yeah. I mean, beautiful they, switch. They, and anyone modeling a terminal, uh, like you know, a, a scaled down version of Union Station or any of the big stations. Yeah. That would be amazing to have. Yeah, to get get in, get in out of any of the yeah. passenger track yeah. tracks. Absolutely. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, one item that we focused last month, and I'm going to focus again because it's just been such a big seller, is the Rapido Barrel Hoppers. And now, special order. These are our ones, so we're pretty well done. The main production ones hasn't sold out. We have a few left, so we did six special O and Rs and six special CNs. So again. We've got a good number of those left, so definitely check those out on our website. Um, We've sold multiple. Well, we sold two skids worth. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's remarkable. And some of our customers have bought an enormous amount of these things. I, I, I was really surprised. Many customers came up to me or had emailed me or spoke to me since they've come out and thanked us for doing the additional yeah, 12 numbers yeah. because it really allowed them to have, you know, two full train lengths. Yes. You know, yeah, southbound right. and northbound, which is prototypical. Um, this is... I told you, it's, it's a very neat product, Peter. Yeah. You could, uh, yeah. yeah, throw this at the cat and see what Well, you could also weight the cat down, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you bet. Oh, look, tell me about that New York Central caboose here. So, that's a Walters uh, Proto 2000 NYC uh, wood caboose. Yeah. And it has the higher cupola, yes, cupola it does. or cupola. But as you notice, it's a shorty. Yeah, it's cute. Um, really a neat, neat model. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andrew's been very excited by it too. Yeah. yeah. It's a um, beauty. Yeah. I'm more of a New York Central bay window kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit more aficionado to the the, wood, the steel cabooses yeah. versus the wood cabooses. Yeah. This has the Bettendorf trucks. I would really be tempted by that. That's a yeah. that's a beauty. Um, yeah. Keeping with uh, uh, that era theme, we've also got a new series of trucks in last month from our good friend uh, Sylvan. Mm -hmm. um, so he's got those in. Um, you want me to? Yeah, hold just grab up one, Peter. One or two of those. Yeah. And let's mention these two. There's here's the Sylvans. They're really something. Okay. There we are. There's one. So this is the half ton uh, series of the of the 40s and 50s that Claire uh, from Sylvan did. So this is a Mercury half ton flatbed. And this is the 1939 to 40 GMC half ton. So uh, last month he brought out eight eight SKUs of half tons. So definitely check those out. Those are on our website. Um, really cool vehicles for that era. Canadian Canadian yeah. supplier. Long time uh, supporter of the oh, hobby. Oh, Canada. And, uh, yeah, he's just up in Park Hill, Ontario. Yeah, that's right. He's not far away. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it for vehicles. Um, yeah. And Well, you, how about uh, well, these puppies? We've had these for a while. They've been really popular, Peter. Um, so these are the showcase miniatures. So this is the 80s bridge dump trucks. They also make the Wrecker, and they also make the USPS and the Canada Post uh, mail truck. So definitely check those out. We have those on our website. 
Um, for structures this month, we've got two new structures. They're beauties. Um, they're from Woodland Scenics. They're the built up. Yeah. So the first one is uh, Smith's Appliance. Yeah, and it has a really neat recessed loading dock at the back, uh, which I think is a really nice feature. And this has yeah. all the lighting already built in there to go with your just yeah. plug lighting system. Yeah, that that's appealing, really. They really do a nice yeah. job with with the uh, with the patching and then the, yeah. the brickwork. And here is a wonderful. We all need to go to the butcher shop, but yeah. the price of meat today is very expensive. Yes, and this is. So a, this is. Uh, here, let's get it around. Carver's the butcher shop. Oh boy. Um, just so the end scalers know. We mm -hmm. have it both in HO and N on oh, both kits. Oh, great. So they're both in stock. Oh, good. Yeah, it's just great detail all the way around. I love the little signs on the front uh, uh, advertising uh, special cuts and uh, meat processing and quality uh, quality choice meats, all those. And, oh, lard. Lard. Lard's available. Yeah, we'll lard it up, folks. There you are. Do they have any back bacon or sal belly at that place, <laughs> I wonder. I'm just looking at There's a word you haven't heard for a while. Yeah, sal, sal belly. Yeah. Yep. So they got pork chops, that's for sure. And they have a hose on the side hanging on a bracket. You can't see that from here, but really neat little details. And this would be lit as well. When's the first time you remember going to a butcher shop as a kid? Oh, I think I think my first clear memory is around five years of age. And I we went to... Uh, a little butcher shop right on Young Street in Toronto, just south of Lawrence Avenue, and and uh, the owner used to give me a raw, or well, not raw, but uh, one, they had smoked wieners. sausage. Yeah, smoked sausage. Yeah, I just love that stuff. So my earliest memory was six. My grandfather, mm -hmm. uh, Stan, he took me to Haynes Meat Market, which was a common staple of Tilsonburg for years. Oh, okay, yeah. And I went by, and they had uh, dried dead rabbit hanging in the window. That's well, quite, yeah, I can, quite the imagined, yeah, imagined yeah. image for a six-year. So, Peter, um, another one that's really cool this month was the uh, Atlas Trainman 89-foot uh, PTTX flat cars with the uh, the banded green loads. It's quite a nice load, and, and oh uh, yeah, really well done. And it's got the threaded rods on the end. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got that available in six numbers with and without load. Yeah. Um, the other one that's really cool is we have the short Atlas Trainman bulkheads. Yeah, those are really neat. I I, I was quite drawn to those. They're really good for service if you're doing like um, dimensional or pieces of steel, yeah. just a tie down load. Well, I was thinking of the two uh, two dimensional loads uh, that came into Stratford Yard this week that were bulkheads that uh, had the I beam steel uh, on them, and I was thinking, gee, that would work out well with these yeah. cars. And then in front of those is the uh, is the Athern Athern Raider Roll bathtubs. So there's the Sullivan scrap. Mm -hmm. um, Hokie, uh, Mass uh, Massachusetts, as well as the CP rail and the Action Red uh, with the multi yeah, mark, the and they one come one. with a load. So the Sullivan scrap comes with the red load, but again, you can replace it for a scrap. Um, and the CP comes in a black uh, coal yeah, load. Coal load, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. New containers this month also from Athern. So there's the 40 footers in one, the 40 footers in the Merrick Sealand, which which has the one container that uh, supports the LGBTQT, LG. BQT community. So two grays well with the, uh, the multicolored one. Yeah, that's um, great. Yeah. yeah. Now obviously, uh, th these have been out since January, but I love them so much, so I really want to show them again. Yeah. Um, the other SD70 ACUs. I know you're you're in love with the oh. uh, the maroon. So there's two numbers in the maroon, <gasps> but I actually love the red. Yeah, I, I gotta admit the very, red looks pretty the good. The candy yeah. apple red is yeah. a very I, sharp That's red. very striking. When it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. one thing I do want to highlight, and I don't, want, and I want to stress this. I, I feel like I stress this one on, an, on every newsletter and a lot of our social media advertising posts. ESU decoders. We have the 21 pin, the 8 pin, and the direct board. We're one of the only suppliers in Canada that, that's consistently having inventory. So definitely check those out if you've got sound projects or installation yeah. or upgrade projects. I've just installed uh, a decoder recently in a friend's uh, locomotive. Yeah. 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 Now I'm going to let you talk uh, about these because this is down your oh, air. Oh, yeah. Down, down 70 years ago. You bet. Bowser Back has, in the day, huh, yeah. Peter? Bowser has released uh, the first batch of RS3s and we have the Spokane uh, Portland and Seattle in the dull green, olive green and yellow, 
and the Pennsylvania in the Brunswick green and notice the radio antennae yeah. on top there and my favorite is this gorgeous Delaware and Hudson dual service RS3 and I'd like to point out that the um, marker lights actually have the little uh, jewels. jewels in them and the detail is just exceptional and these would run as a pair pulling the Laurentian into Montreal lots of pictures of those when the PAs weren't pulling the train and um, the painting is as crisp as you could get it it's just gorgeous there's many pictures in yeah. Greg McDonald book um, thinking yeah that's signatures right signatures and steel's got many DNHs yeah. like those coming into Montreal yeah that's um, right just for everyone knows the, the, <coughs> the, the, the Pensy here we only have it in non sound but again you can upgrade that with a 21 pin decoder mm -hmm. and we also have these in uh, BNX Seattle Pokan and right, Seattle yeah, ones too yeah. so again um, check those out um, fantastic something that we've been waiting on for a bit and Rapido just got to us in the last couple of weeks is the uh, F40 uh, PHs so there's two versions on those Peter, there's the Amtrak mm -hmm. without ditch lights and right. with ditch lights. Yeah. Um, if you're running a train Oops. in southern Ontario, either the International, yes, yeah, or the Maple Leaf, yeah, or the extremely, extremely long time ago, uh, Niagara Rainbow, yes, that's that, right, that ran the Queso. These are perfect power. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're a fan of Amtrak, this was the backbone of their fleet for many oh, years. Oh, for many years, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of those units actually went on to second-hand carriers, or they spent some time in uh, lease service and freight. So yeah. um, we have those in Rapido. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that has really been popular this month, and oh. it's exceptionally well done and executed by Rapido, is the F-59A. So from the far right, we have the, uh, the gray AMT. So that's the uh, Montreal uh, Agency commuter one. The one in Peter's hands is the GO late. Now what separates it from late to early <coughs> is a couple things. One, air conditioners. Two, doesn't have the Ontario decal as the earlys did. And it has the the, uh, the bell and the horn yeah. up oh, forward versus recessed back as delivered. Yeah. These are literally the backbone of the lake shore. <coughs> they are the backbone uh, basically the whole entire go train corridor before they had the mp40 replacements they are exceptional units they yeah. really are yeah. um we also have the <coughs> metro links and then um you're gonna probably ask yourself peter why did lauren bring in the lone star lone star now yeah. obviously we're not recording this episode on may the 4th so we can't compare you know which swartz of a train we have better than uh -huh. each other the reason why we did this one is is a good number of these um, Lone Star or Texas Railway uh, Agency units um, we did is a good number of them actually went to Quebec and had rebuilt, Peter. Oh, I, now that I didn't know. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Unit 120, I've actually filmed Unit 120 dead in tow coming uh -huh. from Montreal to Chicago. Oh, for heaven's sake. Um, Isabel and I were out <coughs> a day Excuse in me. the summer and we mm -hmm. caught that with two CMQs, yeah. a CP military unit. Wow. And a ES44, mm. and that was trailing. Beautiful, oh, beautiful paint scheme. Mm -hmm. We also had the Go Trains experimental scheme. Right here. Yeah. And the real oddball, but it is prototypical, we have the X Go lease service. So these would spend some time <coughs> um, leased out to other regional carriers and also did some freight service too, Peter. Yeah, yeah. They're really. This neat. is quite a selection of product this month, isn't it? Boy, it is, yeah. So. Yeah, it really is something. Uh, a couple of news and notes for the month. Uh, thanks everybody for coming to see either myself and Steve last weekend uh, on Sunday for the Woodstock show, or saw Peter at the show. Yes, thanks for coming. Yeah, uh, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, our next import will be in the next ten days, so check that out. Pending, uh, pending any logistical nightmares seems to be the the, the code word today, yeah, Peter. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely adding new products through the summer, so we'll definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. um, one new thing that uh, will be new next month, Peter, is my wife, Sarah, is going to be writing an article on things to do in the Otter Valley. Oh, okay. That sounds good. So a visit you, here has got to be one of them. Well, a visit here is a mandatory requirement, yeah. Peter. You, can't, you yeah. can't come here without you know, going to Otter Valley. Yeah. But um, we're going to have uh, an article that's going to feature about things that 
um, the mod their spouse can spend the day, whether it's yeah. wineries or um, different Some great places. dining around here too, very, yeah. Very good dining or yeah. artisan shops or even opportunities on the, the lake or the point. So oh, uh, that's neat. Oop. Definitely check that out. Uh, I want to say thanks again, everybody, for the support last month, and uh, we'll see you down the line. Yeah, look forward to seeing you all the time. That's for sure. Bye now. Take care.